Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this series, just to recap, we are using RSS Constellations and KSB Interstellar and I'm trying to make those two mods work in combination with the Realism Overhaul set of mods to do strange and wonderful things relating to the future of space flight. Uh, in this particular live stream, I had uh, tried to dock a new module to our antimatter production station, currently in orbit around Earth at about 10,000 kilometers. Uh, so, but that wasn't really the main focus of what I was doing during the live stream. What I really wanted to do was check out all the KSB interstellar engines to make sure that they were working properly and seeing whether they were properly balanced for realism overall purposes. I decided to start at the bottom end of the list and with the Vasimir engine. Now, as I mentioned in the previous episode, I was especially concerned about these sort of low-powered engines, the ion engines, the Vasimirs, that sort of thing, to make sure that with their high ISP, they weren't like crazy. Now, to show you what I did during the live stream, I have to sort of provide this little boxed view because I had all sorts of other stuff on the periphery of the live stream, and the live stream quality is much, much lower than my YouTube quality because, of course, it's going out as, as a live stream, so it's not pre-processed. You can see here that the Vasimir engine definitely has a problem with its plume that will have to be fixed but also with its thrust, which is 80 kilonewtons, and it has nearly 30,000 ISP uh, at sea level. And with this, you can see uh, it can take off, uh, sort of. It lost one of the solar panels, but this is a very bare bones sort of craft without a, any reaction wheel. I don't remember if the Vasimir engine had any gimbling, probably not. So that's why it's just plunging into the ground. But so there's something that has to be done about that. The next engine I uh, tried out was this nuclear ramjet engine and I decided to run it with liquid methane. But you can see it's pretty big and it says, uh, well the stats there depend on the propellant so it says that it has a certain amount of thrust and a certain ISP there but that varies depending on the kind of fuel that you use. Again, sorry about this sort of boxed situation. I'll try and figure out a better solution next time. Maybe I'll drop all the peripheral stuff and also uh, run music that's YouTube safe for the next Sunday stream. But uh, here I'm frustrated because the liquid methane being run through this supposed nuclear ramjet engine is basically getting the same ISP I'd get just using a methane oxygen mix with a normal rocket engine. Now it's not, it doesn't have the oxygen though, so there is that benefit because it's running through a nuclear reactor. Speaking of reactors, we have this tokamak fusion engine, which is, uh, has a built-in reactor in there. It's a fusion reactor and it's really, really heavy. And we can't, again, we can't really tell right now exactly what kind of thrust an ISP will get. I fit it to a tank filled with likely fuels and take it out to the launch pad. And here we are, and I get all set up, and I press a space bar at some point to stage, and that happens. There we go. Um, so, Tokamak fusion engine destroys the Earth. Well, at least the land portion of it. So there's a glitch there. That one I'm not going to be able to solve. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, uh, beyond my pay grade right there. So uh, here we have a thermal turbojet, and of course that would be for air breathing craft, but I decided to try it in sort of a rocket mode as well. And it has a bit of a problem. It doesn't like the resource that I've got there, which is still liquid methane, and instead is deciding to gulp the atmosphere. I put an air intake on there so that it could. But that's not what I wanted it to do. It's got a nuclear reactor there because these thermal turbojets need a nuclear reactor. Now, somebody suggested uh, that the reactor was the problem. I decided to check on our station to see the reactor that we used there. And that was the molten salt reactor. And so we could replace the reactor that I currently have on the setup with this one. But this reactor wasn't on, so I sent out a Kerbal on EVA to turn it on. But I could have sworn last time we had it on, it was producing antimatter. And we had too much power, way too much power. And... So yeah, I was a bit confused here. I was planning to send up antimatter labs and collectors, 
but looking at it, even after turning it on, our current power was only a matter of kilowatts instead of megawatts. So I was concerned about that. So now we have a plan that we need to send up a reactor uh, instead of sending up an antimatter lab and antimatter collector. Uh, but here I've put the salt reactor on there and it looks like the turbojet is working. But just like with the nuclear ramjet, the ISP is not particularly uh, impressive. I mean, considering, you know, methane gets this kind of ISP anyway. Uh, I was sort of expecting better, though, of course, uh, it's not using oxygen. So we could get away with not carrying the oxygen, which helps. Uh, but yeah, I was under impressed by this, but thought that there was a possibility to build a rocket out of it. And it was about time to get away from just testing engines and instead uh, trying these things out on rockets. Now, is it a good idea to have a nuclear reactor fed uh, thermal turbojet engine as your first stage? Um, not on Earth. So I'm going to have to figure out some way of making sure that uh, the player gets a bit of a hit if they try and do this, you know, the, the ideal thing, well, okay, uh, it's flipping out, so obviously that didn't work, but that's, that has nothing to do with uh, the fact that we're using nuclear exhaust or pot potentially radioactive exhaust, I don't know, um, at this point. Uh, this has a lot to do with the fact that the thermal nozzle, the thermal turbojet, doesn't really gimbal very well. So that's why I'm having all this flipping issue. But the ideal solution, I think, would be if I could figure out a way to give you a reputation hit uh, if you actually light a nuclear engine in the atmosphere. That would be great. That would be exactly what I'd want. Um, otherwise, having a, like a absolute limit saying, well, too bad, you can't use it in the atmosphere would be another way of going about it. But it's not like physically true, right? It's not true in terms of science. It's just uh, public opinion doesn't like it. Or, well, oh, so people around the area might not like it for very practical health reasons. But I think uh, the reputation system would be a better way to reflect that. Anyway, as you can see, I've had uh, some trouble with the whole keeping the rockets oriented properly thing with the using the thermal a thermal turbojet which is not the best nozzle to use it's not a rocket nozzle so i've got the fins on you'll also note that this stage has radiators on it is only carrying liquid methane uh, no liquid oxygen i still wasn't getting very good isp and people told me that the reason is my reactor wasn't big enough so i decided to make a bigger reactor which of course led to a stubbier rocket and here the isp was better in the 500 second region and I decided that this was good enough to proceed with uh, creating a full-fledged orbital rocket. This was more of a sounding rocket sort of thing. After all, if we're going to bear the cost of irradiating Florida, we should probably get some good ISP out of the situation. Anyway, so I moved on to the thermal launch nozzle, which, which is what you see here. This is what you're supposed to use with the nuclear reactors, unless you're making an aircraft that wants to gulp in air. Uh, so this doesn't have the atmosphere option. The uh, turbojet uh, nozzle will uh, try and get atmosphere if it's lacking other fuels. So we have the same setup, molten salt reactor. You see little boosters there um, because initially it seemed like the, um, the engine did not provide initial thrust, but it does actually. So we eventually took the boosters off. But uh, here we go with the thermal launch nozzle. It was because we were using the inferior reactor that we weren't getting the kind of thrust that we needed. And of course, the turbojet nozzle. So here it can do without the boosters. You can see the radiators surrounding the tank. Um, people told me that that wasn't necessary, but I felt better about it, uh, just in general. It would be great if we could land this back at the Cape. Uh, we'll have a second stage eventually here. I'm just seeing how far I can get out and whether it's feasible or not, which it is. And I quickly conclude that we need to think about a second stage. Uh, here, this is a magnetic nozzle, but I quickly decide that this is way too far ahead for what we're looking at. I mean, the thermal launch nozzle is getting 500 seconds, it's got a nuclear reactor there, and it's still getting 560 odd seconds with uh, 
liquid methane. Liquid methane is good for thrust, not good for ISP. You'd want like liquid hydrogen in order to get the high ISPs with the nuclear reactor. But um, yeah, I move on to this closed cycle gas core engine, which seems to be in a better realm. Ignore the 20,000 meters per second it's reading in the delta V there. That's because it wasn't properly reading the payload, I think. We have a dummy payload on this right now. We've got one nuclear reactor and the thermal launch nozzle at the bottom and then that closed cycle gas core engine next. The interesting thing about the closed cycle gas core engine is that it basically clogs itself up. Um, so I think it's only good for one ignition, but it's not limited to that. But, but I can see a situation where I can tell uh, real, use Le Realism Overhaul's plug-in to give it a limited ignition or or we could use test flight to give it a limited burn time because it's also got a soot number in there to represent how much clogginess it's got and so it's, it tells us when the soot reaches 100% and I could just have test flight have a limited burn time on the engine. Here I discover that we have a sort of separation issue possibly the wrong node and so it's firing but it didn't separate so we have to launch again. Uh, this time I made sure everything was all right. And so when it came time to do the first stage separation, um, right around there, okay, and it goes off. So now we've got the closed cycle gas core engine, which, which is still a very, very efficient engine, of course, and using liquid methane again, by the way. So we, we're once again passing liquid methane through a nuclear reactor and it's getting heated and thrown out at very high velocity. So that's how that works and that's why we, we're not carrying any oxygen still. We're still not carrying any oxygen on this which makes it very efficient. Um, the ISP is very good and ultimately I come to the conclusion that this rocket is capable of launching 10% of its launch mass to escape velocity. So the best you can do with a uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engine is about 5% to orbit. So 5% to orbit is what Hydrolox engines can do. Um, that thing can do 10% to escape. So that's pretty darn good. And so I set about building my new nuclear reactor module, which we need to attach to the station. Remember, the station is in a high orbit, 10,000 kilometers by 10,000 kilometers, roughly. Uh, I'm attaching right there um, lackluster labs parts that I configured to be Super Dracos. So those are actually Super Draco engines, but I discovered that I forgot the plume on those. So I'll have to fix that. Again, sorry for the small little window. Um, that's because of the low... I stream at 720p, but I produce these videos at 1080p. It'd be really fuzzy anyway. But I'll reconsider this whole setup uh, for the next video and I'll get something better. Okay, there it says generator shut down because no radiators available. That's a, that's the nuclear reactor that's part of the payload. I got confused by this, but we don't really need uh, it on right now. In fact, I thought I had turned it off in the VAB. Uh, we only need it on after it gets attached to the station, and the station has the radiators. The station has plenty of radiator capacity left, uh, at least last time we checked. So that's all right except I didn't put any other source of electric charge on this and that is a problem because it's eventually gonna run out and it's got a long trip ahead of it as far as all the rendezvous are concerned well I mean as the rendezvous is concerned because it has to take some time to get up there so I decide that we really need to send up some sort of solar panel module and besides, I was interested in doing something a little bit more complicated than this. This was this was relatively simple. So I decided to put together a little tiny solar panel module and put it on the Raptor Atlas rocket that I had launched last time. Raptor Atlas, uh, of course, uh, Atlas-like rocket. Uh, it's a little bit wider on the base. The Centaur stage is the right uh, diameter. But the first stage is wider and carries two of SpaceX's Raptor engines. The upper stage, instead of having, having an RL-10C, actually has an RL-10B2 from the Delta IV rocket. And that gives this uh, spectacular performance. And so it can lift our little... Um, well, it can easily lift the solar panel module because... Actually, it could probably lift the solar panel module directly to the station if we wanted it to. 
So it's on its way and separates the centaur stage and well, centaur-ish stage. I don't know what to call this. A centaur tank with an RL-10B2 attached to it. Call it Super Centaur. And there goes the fairing at the same time because I accidentally staged both of them at the same time. And... And of course, uh, still, an RL-10 takes a little bit of effort to get to orbit. So we're pushing that right now. But that's only because of low thrust. We have plenty of delta V left in the stage when we finally had to ditch it. And here we are approaching the, the reactor module. And docking was fairly straightforward, though. At this point, I didn't really know whether the docking ports were all right. Uh, you never know. The, the docking ports in Realism Overhaul can be very picky at times. And sometimes they just don't dock at all. But these are usually the most reliable docking ports, and they did in fact work, so I was pleased. And then we proceeded with the business of rendezvousing. So overall, I'm impressed by the, by the performance of this closed cycle gas core engine, but I'll have to do something to limit its wonderfulness, because it seems like a good thing to use, uh, like as our first, uh, you know, maybe just after Nerva. So you get Nerva... And then this will be the, like the nuclear engine after Nerva. I think it could be good for that sort of thing. But I, I think since it has that in its description that it uh, you know clogs itself up. I'm, I'm oversimplifying what it does. I'm saying clogs itself up, but that's a good way of summarizing it. But yeah, I'll, I think that's pretty easy to implement. Uh, the problem is the first stage and how to implement some sort of reasonable way of restricting the use of that. For now, I'm just going to ditch using that because I don't want to irradiate the people of Florida. So, yeah, this will be the only uh, or operational launch of that first stage with the nuclear reactor and the thermal launch nozzle. We'll, we'll have to figure out some better way of doing things. Maybe boosters, SRBs, I don't know. I'll think about it. SRBs seem like a bad idea unless somebody comes up with some sort of Clean, S, uh, clean high ISP SRB. Hmm. Anyway, here we go, docking with the station. That was a snug fit. I decided not to deflate the inflatable module. And there we go with our new nuclear reactor. And we have to activate the reactor, of course. So once more, we have our engineer go out on EVA. And we have to activate it. We You have to activate the the reactor is by EVA, you can't do it without EVA, which is sort of neat, I think. That's a good decision. So molten salt reactor number two is online, but when I take a look at our reactor capacity, it's actually really high again. It's like, you know, it was at the end of the previous episode where I decided we really didn't need a new reactor, we really needed more antimatter collectors and antimatter labs. So that was disappointing. We could have done sent up an antimatter thing. So the reactors are messing with me a bit. Next time we have to do the antimatter, I think. And of course, I have to figure out how to uh, make the live streams a little bit more compatible with uh, producing them as these YouTube videos afterwards. I'll work on that. And in any case, I learned some important things about the KSB Interstellar Bond and some of the engines and which ones uh, might need some work and what kind of work. So I will proceed with that and uh, next time on Sunday we will launch more antimatter stuff but uh, again there will be more testing and building of other craft. Perhaps some way of launching that nuclear engine without uh, having a nuclear first stage. We'll see about that. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.